Hi everyone, it's Misty from the Suburban Edge and it is the first day of September. Wow, has it been a busy summer? I hope it's been a great summer for you. I thought it might be time to give you a tour of the Straw Bale Garden. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we did that worked, what we did that didn't work, what I might do different next year. So come on in and let's take a look around at the September garden. I planted this whole bee garden in May and I think if you watch my other video about borage you'll see that I do like to plant for the bees. This year is the first year we had more permanent fencing and you can see I've got my beautiful cosmos are just now starting to go and they're just gorgeous cosmos and right next to those guys are these things called Mexican sunflower I planted them in May I don't think they like it here it's pretty shady but if you want to look down here I have a sweet little zinnia trying to survive these cosmos and way down there's a fever few and it's just kind of a messy wild garden and then secretly some of the stuff Look at that guy right there. How sweet is that? So sweet. I got happy bees too. Down here I have some actual parsley that I need to harvest and dry for my herbs. And just Johnny jump ups. And just happy little crazy bee garden. It's kind of starting to go to seed so I wanted to show it to you before I tore it down a little bit. I'm going to come through and do some September cleanup, but some of the flowers haven't even bloomed yet, and I'll be getting stuff next year, but this has been a very busy garden. This right here is a huge out of control tangerine sage that definitely needs a trim, and uh, rudbeckia. And here's the, the Mexican sunflower. It finally started to bloom, and I'll stand next to it for scale, but this is the softest stem you'll ever feel so amazing and yeah more cosmos that's the bee garden that is the crazy wild bee garden I love it more parsley I have edible plants interspersed with non-edible plants That was a tree falling down in the woods back there. If you heard it, it was close. Kind of scared my dog. This is the Mexican sunflower, the tith, tith, bleh, the Mexican sunflower, the tithonia. And here's some scale height for you. I am going to do a brief video all about Mexican sunflower. It, is an amazing plant it's my first year growing it you do have to have some patience I planted the seeds in May and literally it just started to flower a week ago week ago it's gorgeous though look at that kind of reminds me of a giant zinnia I can see why it's called a sunflower and that's all I have to say about that let's keep going the tour is vast next year's straw bales it is better and cheaper if you buy your straw bales in the fall because if you wait till spring you're going to be paying double maybe triple. What we did was we found a local farmer, contacted them, asked them to set aside a certain amount of bales, went down and get that, got them and I believe they were five dollars a bale. So we get them in the late summer after they have harvested their oats or whatever. You, what you want to do though is make sure that you're getting organic non-treated bales because if you get a treated bale stuff probably isn't going to grow in there very well. Let's keep going. We had an amazing run this year with raspberries. I've never seen anything like it. Once the raspberries are all done, you want to go through and cut out all the old canes. These canes here, these are going to grow us some raspberries next year. So we're, we went through, I say we, but really it was Mark, went through, cut out all the old canes, disposed of them, and remulched. This is ready to go now, ready to go for winter. Now, obviously this is gonna not thrive during the winter, but when it comes back out in the spring, it will relief and bud, and we will be getting massive amounts of raspberries again. 
Okay, we've got row one and row two. There is an arch over half of this row. And I will just say that my cabbage was so crazy, I don't know what to do with all the cabbage. So please comment down below with your cabbage ideas. I need them. But let's just check out what's really happening here. All right, so at the beginning of row two, uh, we have just some lovely, pretty flowers, zinnias, daisies, pansies. Again, pollinator attractors. I have harvested some cabbage. See my little babies are coming in and some still need to be harvested. And then I have, it's been raining so I do plan to get dripped on. I have here a beautiful archway of green beans. We're walking in. Look at this. Beautiful green beans. Got all dark all of a sudden. And they just hang down inside and we come along and harvest. And then I have my very sad cucumbers. <laughs> Last year, my cucumbers were, I, I hated cucumbers by the end of the year. By mid-September, I was like begging people to take cucumbers off my hands. This year, I didn't hardly get any. In fact, I'll show you. This is my sum total of my lemon cucumber harvest for the whole year. It is sad, sad, sad. I don't know if it was just the extreme heat but then on the other side of the archway, I have some some cucumbers coming on. But no, I don't even think I have enough to... <laughs> look at that guy. Chubby. I don't think I have enough cucumbers to do any pickling. And that's not good because we have, I figured it out, a par level of one and a half jars per month that my family goes through, quart jars. And I have 13 jars, so if you can do the math, I do not have enough pickles to last me until I pickle again next year. So I may be buying pickles. And the sad thing is I had an excellent dill crop that's all gone to seed now, and I will have to buy dill as well. So yeah, some years are like that, aren't they? Some years are. Let's move on to butternut squash. So this is um, butternut squash, and it's a whole archway. I'll pan slowly. You'll see some spaghetti squash in the background. My butternuts, panning, panning, panning. I had to do a lot of artificial uh, insemination this year <laughs> of my butternuts where I, I just forced, forced them on themselves because the, the bees just weren't getting the hang of it. <laughs> But I have quite a few. And then here are the spaghetti squashes, which are doing so well. I got a lot of them. So I hope my family can tolerate some spaghetti squash. Remember that one I, I had to sling up? Well, there's a friend now right next to it, and that's cool. You want to leave your winter squash on the vine as long as you possibly can. For spaghetti squash, this would be ideal. You want the rind to be so hard you can't puncture it with your fingernail. That's a great test. And also it turns this really lovely yellow color. I could take it off, I could eat it right now. But if you want it to be a good keeper, the goal is to keep your, your winter squash on the vine for as long as possible, but not past the first frost. So keep an eye on your weather reports. Um, I plan on leaving these suckers up for as long as possible and if I have to come out in the middle of the night and harvest them, I will. And with the butternut, which is farther back here, uh, you want the same thing. You can't poke it with your fingernail and you want that nice golden buttery color. You can see the other ones have are stripey. They kind of lose their green stripes. They get that golden butternut color and they should keep for a really long time if they have those characteristics. I will do more on that when I actually harvest my squash. Until then, I'm really enjoying this magical tunnel of just fertility. It's beautiful. I am growing food for my family and I know where this food came from. It came from those awesome straw bales. Now, straw bales love a vining squash. They have I, always done well for me. Usually cucumbers do really well, so next year, I'm gonna move them in the garden and see if I don't get a little bit of a better reaction. What I haven't done well with is root vegetables. Now, I know people do. I may continue to try it, but I am not gonna dedicate four and a half bales to root vegetables when I could be growing more beans or more squash. Beans 
tomato squash those plants they love a bale I'm just saying also basil and peppers most plants just not I'm not doing great with carrots onions beets that kind of thing don't know why then in this bale here I had beets and they did not do well I maybe got 10 beets and my carrots aren't doing well at all and this bale fell over but my kale is taking over it's time to harvest my kale and my carrots are just sad as can be interspersed in my garden I do like to put flowers you know just gorgeous flowers to so some gorgeous zinnias my friend Alyssa grew for me hey Alyssa uh, she started them for me I grew them I should say just for context it's in a bale so it's a good you know 14 inches taller than it normally would be but yeah it's doing great this is my first year doing zucchini in the straw bale I tried to go vertical uh, it fought me every step of the way and I think off of this plant I got maybe three zucchinis which is so crazy I have a freezer full of tomatoes in fact I've been trying to clean out my freezer even more so I can have more room for tomatoes according to plan and this is my determinant tomatoes I don't know what kind of tomato it is but they're pretty good little slicers and then I have some basil some peas and crazy tomato situation I told you I was gonna let them go wild after the first few prunings right I prune them pretty hard at the beginning my crop has been intense uh, I've been pulling a lot out these are the Vesuvios that aren't supposed to be here look at that gorgeous little thing and uh, yeah and then I have some jalapeno peppers companion planted right there we've been getting some jalapenos off of that and I'll take you inside the tunnel here so on this side these are all my matinas and then on this side are those striped Romans except for my one Vesuvio that snuck in there and that one's pretty much ready to pick and they just hang down and I come up here and I harvest me some tomatoes just like that just gorgeous right just pick a tomato and so it's time for me to come through here and pick again but you can see all the green ones so I'm hoping for some more days of sunshine if not I know what to do pretty good so this is the other side here and this one I tried to grow this is another zucchini I tried to go vertically and it's a lot of work and I'm really not getting the yield I thought I would get so I got a different plan for next year that's rows two and three this is where I had garlic growing and I planned to do um, more raised beds right here Mark's gonna make me some more garlic beds so I'm standing in front of my pianolo del Vesuvio tomatoes that I did a video on and I will link it at the end if you didn't see it what a crazy tomato like when I first started growing it I had nothing but leaf curl I tried everything to alleviate that leaf curl I I tried to change its diet I changed the watering schedule I just couldn't figure it out none of my other tomato varieties have ever had that issue no blight no powdery mildew no leaf curl but this one really did and I thought gosh you know it's grown on the side of a mountain in Italy maybe there's just something in that soil and there's not a ton of information about how to grow this particular tomato so it's discouraged but it grows like an actual weed and so I decided here's what I decided to do and I don't know how many gardeners out there have done this I just died inside to the leaf curl I said okay stop caring because this plant is prolific and it makes tomatoes that taste I can't even describe how they taste they're amazing they are amazing I will plant these again and I'm just not gonna care about the leaf curl because clearly my plants don't care about the leaf curl here I am at the Vesuvio you can see the leaf curl it comes up to a certain point and then it's just lush right look at these tomatoes look at these just incredible like you can see all the green ones 
Now remember, these are the ones that even if they're not ripe, they will continue to ripen because they have an enzyme in them that kind of prohibits rot. So they will ripen no matter what. And I will show you, I kind of proved that to myself. Look at this, look at all these green tomatoes. Do you see those? Look at that. Let's go around to the inside of the tunnel. You can just see they're hanging down in just massive waves of tomatoes. Like each plant is fully, these are all green tomatoes, fully loaded. Look at that. That's nuts, right? So, you know, sometimes you just, you get what you get and you can't worry about it. I tried everything, it didn't seem to matter and it doesn't seem to matter as the, as the outcome. So check this out. This is a tomato branch that I broke off uh, probably mid-July and I just hung up the green tomatoes and yeah, they're just still, they're just ripening. So I <laughs> Spiders, spiders, they love these archways. So my point mostly about talking about the leaf curl or really anything that's going wrong in your garden is to kind of encourage you. It, it's never gonna be perfect. It's a living and growing thing. It's never gonna be picture perfect. It's never going to behave the way it did last year. My cucumbers, case in point, I got maybe 15 cucumbers this year. I don't understand it. And I don't know if it was weather, operator error. I don't know. I've grown many cucumbers in the past, but sometimes you just got to go, okay, and move on. Beets don't work for me in the bales. I'm not going to try it again next year. I don't even really like beets, so I can just get them at the store. That's how I feel about beets. Sorry if that offends you beet lovers, but I don't like them. So why am I dedicating space to something I don't like? You know what I do like? I like dry beans, so I'm gonna dedicate more space to that. And I like tomatoes, and I'm good at them. So, so my point was, let's get back to that. My point was, don't be discouraged, and really take what you get. Count your blessings, and learn from, you know, from one year to the other. Write yourself notes, whatever it is. I'm already planning next year's garden. I'm already buying seed. If you're going to do garlic, you need to start getting your garlic seed like soon because October's right around the corner and you need to be prepped. Your beds need to be ready to go. It's not a big deal, but if you want to do garlic, it's time to start thinking about it and looking up the varieties you want. A lot of the varieties I wanted were already sold out mid-August. So there's that. Um, okay, I'm going to show you my beans. Oh, and I wanted to show you the pumpkin. Do you remember when I planted that pumpkin in my compost pile? Well, I forgot to water it a lot, but it still survived, so that's cool. The okra didn't survive. I didn't think it would. We, we tried it. Sometimes plants are just funky. I don't know. That's just the way it goes. We're almost done. I'm almost done. I thought this would take forever, but I guess it's the editing that takes forever. Anybody out there create content realize how long it takes to make a five minute video? I love you guys. Hey, and I wanted to say thanks to all my new subscribers and God bless you to all my old subscribers that are still hanging in. Please make sure you're still subscribed. Sometimes YouTube thinks that you aren't really subscribed and they'll unsubscribe you. So double check that you're subscribed, please. Please, I wanna know you're out there, but big shout out to all you guys that have been supporting me and you know, I finished my chemo at the end of July. I'm finally feeling like a regular person again. I'm not a regular person, but you know what I mean. I'm finally feeling normal for me. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And it's awesome. I was scheduled to have my port removed just this last week. I was really looking forward to that, but my surgeon was sick. A couple weeks from now, I am having the port removed and it has been Sorry. It's been a journey, huh? You know, it's been a real journey. <sighs> sorry. No, I'm not sorry. These are tears of joy. I'm not sorry. I will say that, you know, if you're going through your own struggles, 
If you're going through your own journey, just know you're not alone. You've never been alone. For me, the Lord has walked me through this journey in such amazing ways, and He's blessed me through this stuff in ways I would have never imagined. So, you're not alone. Whatever your journey is, whatever your struggles are, you're not alone. Okay, can we look at my beans now? No more crying. Thank you. One thing I learned about beans, which I, I guess I thought I knew about beans, but you know how with peas, I don't know if you do this, but I'll, I'll bring out four or five peas that I've soaked in water overnight and just kind of plant them here and there. Succession planting. And I don't know why, because, you know, peas and beans are very similar, but I feel like an idiot telling you this. So, you know, don't judge or do. I don't care. One thing it didn't occur to me until like the end of the season is I should have been doing that with my beans, like with my beans, which I didn't do. And I didn't do it last year. I just planted my beans and went about my life and, you know, harvested a pint jar of beans and yay. But you know, if you succession plant like every 10 days, you'll get a bigger harvest because your beans will be coming up at different times. Okay, that's my tip for you in case that didn't occur to you because it 100% did not occur to me. Another thing is bush beans versus like vining beans or pole beans. I don't like bush beans and the reason is is because they don't yield as much and that is why you would succession plant, right? I also don't like bush beans as much because they end really soon they like kind of all at once and you're scrambling to get your bean harvest in that's okay for me because i don't really i'm not succession planting so i'm not harvesting that much next year i'm going to do it differently all of the bush beans that i plan to plant are going to go in that space that i previously have dedicated to things like carrots and beets i'm planning for more beans because that's something that i as if you've watched any of my videos, you know I love beans. I love to have beans. I love the whole concept of beans. It's almost a perfect food. Embrace the bean people. But you can succession plant the vining beans as well and increase your harvest. I prefer vining beans. They're way easier to harvest. They, you get more per bean, uh, but not all varieties of beans are vining beans. Case in point, I have these beans that I planted in my flower bed. Because they were so low to the ground, I actually missed a pod of beans that had actually uh, dried out. And a whole new bunch of beans are coming out of the ground now. So I don't know if I'm going to get any beans this late in the season. We'll see. But that's kind of what triggered me. Like, oh my gosh, I should have been doing this all summer long. This is how you learn. This is how I learn anyway mostly the hard way. These are called the Aracara yellow bean and you can see they're pretty much spent. The bean, the vines are, are done and they only get so tall, right? This is about, well, I don't know, 14 inches tall. And here's the plant that came up from a pod of, a pod that got missed. And so <laughs> I got, I got a really sturdy stalk here and I might get some beans don't know. I will most likely not plant them in the ground again. These are my Hidatsa red beans. It's one of my favorite beans to grow. So easy. And you can see that they vine way up to the tippy top of that cattle panel. And it's really easy to come up to it and assess, okay, well, these are nearly done. These aren't done and kind of pick off the done beans. So when you're growing beans for shelling, you want to let them go until they are all the way dried out. And I might have some in here I just harvested. Here's one right here. You wanna let them go until they're all the way dried out. And this one's got a little dampness because it's been raining. But when you pop it open, I should have some jewels in here. And as these dry out a little bit more, they will darken. And they're little squarish beans. They are so great, these little red guys. Now I can take the best of my harvest and replant them next year because these are an heirloom bean. I only buy heirloom bean seeds. 
Now, we did not have enough bales for this side of the cattle panel, which we should this year. I, I didn't know how big our garden was going to be last year. I had to estimate the bales and I was just shy of needing them, so I created a bed here. Hard about that is this is 100% sand where we are. It is completely... Sorry, I got distracted by a wasp that's carrying the head of another wasp. Oh, he flew right in front of you, so hopefully you got a good shot of that. Uh, gross. It's completely sand in this garden, which is why straw bales are great, but also in order to create any of these garden beds I've shown you, I had to dig out, uh, add five-way soil, add compost, add peat moss, a little sand back in. I kind of had to create my own soil, and it was a lot of work. Now I'm hoping that as I plant nitrogen fixers and other great plants in these beds, that the soil will just get better and better, that these beds every year will improve. I'm adding worm castings. I'm adding fertilizer. The, the soil in, in my brain is just gonna, the soil in my brain. It, my idea is that the soil that in the beds I have created are just gonna get better and better. However, if it's on this cattle panel, I want it to have bales, if at all possible. And I'll show you why. I was happy enough with my beans, because beans fix the soil. They are nitrogen fixers. But this squash, what a sad, pathetic situation that is. Come on down. So this is the cattle panel that has no bales. And those are my Hadatsa red beans over there. And over here, I thought, oh, I'll grow some squash. Yeah, and then there's all my companion planting. I have marigolds to discourage any eating of things because we have an unfinished fence there and well, bunnies can squeeze right through there. They haven't this year, so I'm really glad. And borage, lots of borage to encourage pollinization. Here's my, here's my squash and I just gave up on it. This is an acorn squash and this is my one acorn squash. And for size, here's my hand little guy right and this is the only other female I've ever seen on this entire plant it doesn't get pollinated it's just ugh. I'm not even bothering trying to make it climb my theory about the whole squash thing like <laughs> I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on something that's gonna give me something this big around one of that what hot, what this right here is my sunflower garden <laughs> Why no sunflowers? Well, I had a stomach bug. I was in bed for several days, and when I came out, every single flower was eaten off of my sunflowers. They were just stock, 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 stock. So to discourage any more squirrel action, I dug them out. Yeah, you can see what they did here. Destructive much? This right here I wanted to talk about too, and I will do a short video on this. This is called the Jewels of Opar. Very beautiful. A lot of florists love this because they have these little beady flowers that come out. I'm just letting it go to seed. And this is an edible plant, and I plan on making it so. And then over here, you saw the beans. Those are the, the little yellow beans. And then I have some more Mexican sunflowers growing and some more cosmos that I hope plan to bloom at some point. What the heck? And then uh, my nasturtiums are eating my lavender, more cosmos, more Mexican sunflower in the back. Just a little beauty lushness. And then there's my lima beans. Here's a shot from another angle, bee garden. Summer house. And then we're gonna zoom over here and I will show you what is happening with the pumpkin that I planted in the compost pile. So the pumpkins don't have any female flowers yet and if you're not sure what a female flower is on a squash plant, I will append a squash video that will show you what to look for. Basically, the female flower is going to look like the fruit, and you might see a flower come out with the fruit on it, and you'll think, oh, I got one, it's gonna grow. But if it doesn't get pollinated, it's just gonna fall off. So I do a lot of 
male to female pollination. Let me show you. This is a male flower. It's just a straight stem. But the female flower, if I had any to show you, would have a little pumpkin on the end. Aha! I found one. See this little guy right here? That's a female pumpkin flower. And when it blooms, you better have some males ready to go to pollinate it. Then you'll get a pumpkin. If you don't, you won't get anything but a dead female flower, which is sad. But it seems to be pretty happy here in the compost pile. There's my compost pile. We are lazy composters. See all my volunteer potato plants? We'll pull one up as soon as it, they start to die back. That's it for the garden tour. I hope it was fun for you to see you know what's working what's not working uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up it is only September a lot of things that need to get done some definite cleanup it's time to start doing that really just enjoying the fruits of our labor right now because there's nothing really crazy that has to be done it's just a lot of cleanup I just want to say thanks again if you enjoyed this content I would love a thumbs up it really helps the channel leave a comment I I love hearing from you guys if you haven't watched my channel before check it out I say God bless to you guys and thanks for watching thanks for being a part of my family here's those videos I was talking about bye